Act 1, Scene 2, Enter Order, Amble, Furnace, and Watch O Lord. Set all things right, or, as my name is Order, and by this staff of office that commands you, this chain and double ruff, symbols of power, whoever misses in his function, for one whole week makes forfeiture of his breakfast, and privilege in the wine cellar. Am. You are merry, good master, steward. Fern. Let him, I'll be angry. Am. Why, fellow furnace, tis not twelve o'clock yet, nor dinner taking up, then, tis allowed, cooks, by their places, may be chileric. Fern. You think you have spoke wisely, good Amble, my ladies go before. Ord. Nay, nay, no wrangling. Fern. Twit me with the authority of the kitchen. At all hours, and all places, I'll be angry, and thus provoked, when I am at my prayers I will be angry. Am. There was no hurt meant. Fern. I am friends with thee, and yet I will be angry. Ord. With whom? Fern. No matter whom. Yet, now I think on it, I am angry with my lady. Watch. Heaven forbid, man. Ord. What cause has she given thee? Fern. Cause enough, Master Steward. I was entertained by her to please her palate, and, till she forced her eating, I performed it. Now, since our master, noble Allworth, died, though I cracked my brains to find out tempting sauces, and raise fortifications in the pastry such as might serve for models in the low countries, which, if they had been practiced at Breda, Spinola might have thrown his cap at it, and there took it and. But you had wanted matter there to work on. Fern. Matter. With six eggs, and a strike of rye meal, I had kept the town till doomsday, perhaps longer. Ord. But what's this to your pet against my lady? Fern. What's this? Marry this, when I am three parts roasted and the fourth part parboiled, to prepare her viands, she keeps her chamber, dines with a panada or water gruel, my sweat never thought on. Ord. But your art is seen in the dining room. Fern. By whom? By such as pretend love to her, but come to feed upon her. Yet, of all the harpies that do devour her, I am out of charity with none so much as the thin-gutted squire that's stolen into commission. Ord. Justice greedy. Fern. The same, the same, meets cast away upon him, it never thrives. He holds this paradox, who eats not well, can ne'er do justice well. His stomach's as insatiate as the grave, or strumpus ravenous appetites. Knocking. Watch. One knocks. Enter Allworth Ord. Our late young master. Am. Welcome, sir. Fern. Your hand, if you have a stomach, the cold baked meat's ready. Ord. His father's picture in little. Fern. We are all your servants. Am. In you he lives. All. At once, my thanks to all, this is yet some comfort. Is my lady stirring? Enter Lady Allworth, waiting woman, and chambermaid Ord. Her presence answers for us. Elol. Sort those silks well. I'll take the air alone. Excellent waiting woman and chambermaid. Fern. You air and air, but will you never taste but spoon meat more? To what use serve I? Elol. Prithee, be not angry, I shall ear long. I the meantime, there is gold to buy the aprons, and a summer suit. Fern. I am happy as it, and furnace now grows cool. Elol. And, as I gave directions, if this morning I am visited by any, entertain him as heretofore, but say, in my excuse, I am indisposed. Ord. I shall, madam. Elol. Do, and leave them. Nay, stay you, Allworth. Excellent order, amble, furnace, and watch all. All. I shall gladly grow here, to wait on your commands. Elol. So soon turn it courtier. All. Style not that courtship, madam, which is duty purchase it on your part. Elol. Well, you shall irk him, I'll not contend in words. How's it with your noble master? All. Never like himself, no scruple lessen it in the full weight of honor. He did command me, pardon my presumption, as his unworthy deputy, to kiss your ladyship's fair hands. Elol. I am honored in his favor to me. Does he hold his purpose for the low countries? All. Constantly, good madam, but he will in person first present his service. Elol. And how prove you of his course? You are yet like virgin parchment, capable of any inscription, vicious or honorable. I will not force your will, but leave you free to your own election. All. Any form you please, I will put on, but, might I make my choice, with humble emulation I would follow the path my lord marks to me. El all. Tis well answered, and I commend your spirit. You had a father, blessed be his memory. That some few hours before the will of heaven took him from me, he did commend you, by the dearest ties of perfect love between us, to my charge, and, therefore, what I speak, you are bound to hear with such respect, as if you live it in me. He was my husband, and how you are not son of my womb, you may be of my love, provided you deserve it. All. I have found you, most honored madam, the best mother to me, and, with my utmost strengths of care and service, will labor that you never may repent your bounties showered upon me. L. All. I much hope it. These were your father's words, if e'er my son followed the war, tell him it is a school, where all the principles tending to honor are taught, if truly followed, that for such as repair thither is a place in which they do presume they may with license practice their lusts and rights, they shall never merit the noble name of soldiers. 
to dare boldly, in a fair cause, and for their country's safety, to run upon the cannon's mouth undaunted, to obey their leaders, and shun mutinies, to bear with patience the winter's cold and summer's scorching heat, and not to faint, when plenty of provision fails, with hunger. But the essential parts make up a soldier, not swearing, dice, or drinking. All, there's no syllable you speak, but is to me an oracle, which but to doubt were impious. L. All. To conclude, but we're ill company, for often men are like to those with whom they do converse, and, from one man I warn you, and that's well-born. Not cause he's poor, that rather claims your pity, but that he's in his manners so debauched, and hath to vicious courses sold himself. Tis true, your father loved him, while he was worthy the loving, but if he had lived to have seen him as he is, he had cast him off, as you must do. All, I shall obey in all things. L. All. Follow me to my chamber, you shall have gold to furnish you like my son, and still supplied, as I hear from you. All, I am still your creature. Excellent. Scene three enter over each, greedy, order, amble, furnace, watchall, and merrill greedy. Not to be seen. Over. Still cloistered up. A reason, I hope, assures her, though she make herself close prisoner ever for her husband's loss, twill not recover him. Lord, sir, it is her will, which we, that are her servants, ought to serve, and not dispute. However, you are nobly welcome, and, if you please to stay, that you may think so, there came, not six days since, from Hull, a pipe of rich canary, which shall spend itself for my lady's honor. Greedy. Is it of the right race? Lord. Yes, Master Greedy. And. How his mouth runs or. Fern. I make it run, and run. Save your good worship. Greedy. Honest Master Cook, thy hand. Again, how I love thee. Are the good dishes still in being? Speak, boy. Fern. If you have a mind to feed, there is a chine of beef, well seasoned. Greedy. Good. Fern. A pheasant, larded. Greedy. That I might now give thanks for it. Fern. Other kickshaws. Besides, there came last night, from the forest of Sherwood, the fattest stag I ever cooked. Greedy. A stag, man. Fern. A stag, sir, part of it prepared for dinner, and back it in puff paste. Greedy. Puff paste, too. Sir Giles, a ponderous chine of beef, a pheasant larded. And red deer too, Sir Giles, and back it in puff paste. All business set aside, let us give thanks here. Fern, how the lean skeletons wrapped. Over. You know we cannot. Mar. You worship sir to sit on a commission, and if you fail to come, you lose the cause. Greedy. Cause me no causes. I'll profit, for such dinner, we may put off a commission. You shall find it in receipt to Simul Cordo. Over. Fie, Master Greedy. Will you lose me a thousand pounds for a dinner? No more, for shame. We must forget the belly when we think of profit. Greedy. Well, you shall or rule me, I could even cry now. Do you hear, Master Cook, send, but a corner of that immortal pasty, and I, in thankfulness, will, by your boy, send you a brace of three pences. Fern. Will you be so prodigal? Enter well born over. Remember me to your lady. Who have we here? Well, you know me. Over. I did once, but now I will not, thou art no blood of mine. Avon, thou beggar. If ever thou presume to owe me more, I'll have thee cagged and whipped. Greedy. I'll grant the warrant. Think of pie corner, furnace. Excellent overreach, greedy, and Merrill. Watch. Will you out, sir? I wonder how you durst creep in. Lord. This is rudeness. And saucy impudence. Am. Cannot you stay to be served, among your fellows, from the basket, but you must needs press into the hull. Fern. Prithee, vanish into some outhouse, though it be the pigsty. My scullion shall come to thee. Enter Allworth well. This is rare, oh, here's Tom Allworth. Tom. All. We must be strangers, nor would I have you seen here for a million. Exit. Well, better and better. He contents me too. Enter waiting woman and chambermaid woman. Foe, what is smells here? What thing's this? Cham. The creature made out of the privy. Let us hence, for love's sake, or I shall swoon. Woman. I begin to feel faint already. Excellent waiting woman and chambermaid. Watch. Will you know your way, Am? Or shall we teach it you, by the head and shoulders? Well, no, I will not stir. Do you mark? I will not. Let me see the wretch, that dares attempt to force me. Why, you slaves, created only to make legs, and cringe, to carry in a dish, and shift a trencher, that have not souls only to help a blessing beyond blackjacks or flagons, you, that were born only to consume meat and drink, and batten upon reversions, who advances, who shews me the way, Lord, my lady, enter Lady Allworth, waiting woman, and chambermaid Cham, here's the monster, woman, sweet madam, keep you glove to your nose, Cham, or let me fetch some perfumes may be predominant, you wrong yourself else, Will. Madam, my designs bear me to you. L. All. To me. Well. And though I have met with, but ragged entertainment from your grooms here, I hope from you to receive that noble usages may become the true friend of your husband, and then I shall forget these. L. All. I am a to see and hear this rudeness. 
Erst thou think, though sworn, that it can ever find belief, that I, he to the best men of this country deniate my presence since my husband's death, can fall so low as to change words with thee. Thou son of infamy, forbear my house, and know and keep the distance that's between us, or, though it be against my gentler temper, I shall take order you no more shall be an eyesore to me. Well, scorn me not, good lady, but, as in form you are angelical, imitate the heavenly natures, and vouchsafe at the least a while to hear me. You will grant the blood that runs in this arm is as noble as that which fills your veins, those costly jewels, and those rich clothes you wear, you men's observance, and women's flattery, are in you no virtues, nor these rags, with my poverty, in me vices. You have a fair fame, and, I know, deserve it, yet, lady, I must say, in nothing more than in the pious sorrow you have shewn for your late noble husband. Ord, how she stirs, fern, and hardly can keep finger from the eye to hear him name it. Elol, have you aught else to say? Well, that husband, madam, was once in his fortune almost as low as I, want, debts, and quarrels lay heavy on him, let it not be thought a boast in me, though I say, I really did him. Was I that gave him fashion, mind the sword, that did on all occasions second his, I brought him on and off with honor, lady, and when in all men's judgments he was sunk, and, in his own hopes, not to be buoyed up, I stepped unto him, took him by the hand, and set him upright. Fern, are not we base rogues, that could forget this? Well, I confess, you made him master of your estate, nor could your friends, though he brought no wealth with him, blame you for it, for he had a shape, and to that shape a mind made up of all parts, either great or noble. So winning a behavior. Not to be resisted, madam. Elol, tis most true, he had. Well, for his sake, then, in that I was his friend, do not contemn me. Elol, for what's past excuse me, I will redeem it. Order, give the gentleman a hundred pounds. Well, no, madam, on no terms, I will not beg nor borrow sixpence of you, but be suppliant elsewhere, or want thus ever. Only one suit I make, which you deny not to strangers, and tis this. Whispers to her. Elol, fie, nothing else. Well. Nothing, unless you please to charge your servants to throw away a little respect upon me. Elol, what you demand is yours. Well, I thank you, lady. Now what can be wrought out of such a suit is yet in supposition. I have said all, when you please, you may retire. Exit lady all. Nay, all's forgotten, to the servants. And, for a lucky omen to my projects, shake hands, and end all quarrels in this cellar. Ord. Agreed, agreed. Fern. Still marry Master Wellborn. Excellent.